Hey, good morning, everybody. So we're here on another job site. We've got some stamped concrete to do. We got to pump the we got to pump the concrete way up into that open area back there, second deck. So we got to park the trucks out on the road today. But we're getting ready to go. Seven in the morning. We'll take you upstairs. Show you what that's going to look like. This is our entrance for walking in right here. It's quite a maze up here on the second floor, but this is where we're at over here. So the challenge, the challenge with this job was obviously pumping up on a second deck and then having like three of the walls enclosed almost on us. So we really, the access was this entry that you see right here in front. We had a door access to the back, to the right. And the way the sun was coming up over that little knee wall, the four foot knee wall, you, it's, you never really know what part of this is going to start to set first, where you're going to have to get on it to stamp. So that's what made this a little bit challenging and a little bit tricky. We were hoping, we were hoping that this first truck right here, we actually got two trucks. This is about a thousand square feet, but it's only two and a half to three inches thick. So we could have done it with one truck, 10 and a half yards. But I broke the trucks up. I got a couple five and a half yarders. So we're hoping that this this truck right here, where we have the best access, was going to start setting up first, so we could get on it with the stamps. Versus that second truck over there, where the sun's going to hit first. Um, so if that one starts setting up before this one, then it's going to make this whole job a little bit trickier to get stamped. But as far as pouring the concrete, I mean that wasn't too bad. Whenever you're pumping dangle pumping like this we call this dangle pumping you know the pump pretty much puts the concrete right where you need it they are putting radiant heat this is going to be an outside patio this building is going to be for cloud storage so it has something to do with you know internet and storing all kinds of data and this must be some type of outside patio for the people just to to relax on or you know get their lunch and sit on that's about as far as I know we just get hired to come in here and pour and stamp the concrete we don't get too many details as far as what the building's going to be used for and all that so right now we're getting the first truck dumped out that was five and a half yards and of course it takes about three quarters of a yard just to fill the pump you know the hopper and the pump all the pipe so we tried to we tried to figure it so we would get at least a halfway and then this is the second five and a half yard truck. You can see the sun's hitting that corner over there right where we're finishing up. And you can kind of tell how the sun's going to be rising. And it's going to be hitting that back wall quite a bit. So it did call for today to be a little bit cloudy, which we thought would really help us out if it would just stay cloudy and not have the sun beating on this. Because when you're stamping a thousand square feet outside like this, you know, it's gonna go pretty quick. You have, by the time you start stamping, you've probably got, you know, maybe 45 minutes to get this whole thing stamped before the other end get, starts getting a little too firm on you. And if it's all cloudy, then we know the three of us are gonna be able to stamp that in plenty of time. We're gonna be fast enough to do that. If it's all in the sun, pouring on this type of styrofoam with uh, only being about two and a half to three inches thick, then it's we know it's going to go pretty fast and it's going to be a hustle for us to get this all stamped and make it come out and look really, really good. So that was kind of the challenge here on this job. And again, it's always a challenge whenever you're pumping on a second deck too. So we had to take that into consideration as we get going. And we had about an hour to wait after we got done pouring and here I am I'm getting on it I'm checking in and it, it's starting to feel pretty good it's really close to start stamping so I'm gonna get out there on my skids my I got a couple mag floats with me a couple different sizes and I'm just gonna mag float out the surface get the both all the bull float lines out make sure I get anything filled in that needs to be filled in make the surface look a little bit better and a little bit creamier for our stamping and we're going to use liquid release on this. We decided to use liquid because it's quite a bit cleaner than using powder. We added a little bit of powdered color into the liquid release. So we got some charcoal color in there. We got some gray color in the concrete itself. 
and it's just going to make the process easier when we come back to wash this and saw it, clean it, and get it ready for sealing. So the liquid release really is a lot less messier than using powder. So Darren's just kind of, he's kind of fixing the, the wand on, on the, on the pump-up sprayer. It'll take about five gallons of liquid release to do something about this size, about a thousand square feet. You really want to put it on pretty heavy so the stamps don't stick. You can see how much of that's in the sun. We got those shade walls we're kind of dealing with now. So at this point, we're not sure just how cloudy it's going to be. We're a little bit concerned about, you know, that sun part where I am down there setting up too fast. Especially when it beats off a little bit of a wall like that, that four foot wall, it even gets even warmer on that edge. I noticed when I was magging that out right there, it was pretty firm over there. And we got a ways to go before we're going to get there with these stamps. So when, as soon as I got back off there from Magan, I, I jumped right on and helped these guys. And we're just going to, we're going to hustle this thing out as fast as we can. It's, it's really perfect for stamping right here where we are now in this kind of half shady part. Hasn't really got any, any sun on this part. So the texture and the, the seams and everything are coming out really, really nice. <clears throat> Once, once I got jumped back, then it just it helps speed everything up with three guys. You know, two guys doing this, doing the release, picking up the stamps, moving them, tamping them. Two guys, it just slows things down. It takes quite a while, but when you get that third person, it kind of almost like doubles the speed at which you can do this. So right now we're still, you know, we're keeping an eye on that sun. And believe it or not, we are, we are trying to move. We're being careful. Obviously, we don't want to have any mistakes. We don't want to step off the stamps. We want to make sure the stamps, they all stay tight. So we're being careful, but we're hustling, too, to get down to that other end. Those stamps get quite slippery, too. When you get all that liquid release over them, they're kind of, they're really slippery. And we like, we like working off a previous stamp that's already there. So we had... We had just enough stamps to go across this thing. It was about 31 feet across. And then that gave us about two or three stamps on the back side of them that we could pick up and work off the other stamps. So that always makes things a little bit easier when, we're, when you're stamping if you can work off your other stamps. So that was our thinking here. We actually got, we got a full set of stamps here. Then we got another half a set that we're working with which gave us about 15 mats to work with while we're going across this thing. You can see there's not too many extras that we got to pull up. It just, when you, when you have a stamp down and you set one in front of it, it helps keep them from walking and spreading apart a little bit better than if, if you're just working off um, the, the pattern itself. You can see being on a commercial project like this, we all got to wear hard hats too. We don't typically have to wear hard hats when we're on residential jobs. So we had to break out the hard hats for this one. So what we what, what, what happened as we got going here is it did cloud in a little bit. You can see the sun kind of went away. So that really helped us. We haven't had to use a tamper yet on this. We can just use the weight of our bodies and our feet to get the really good texture in. You can see the black charcoal on the release. That's gonna really give this a nice two-tone effect you'll see here in the end. This was quite a little process working all the way across this thing, getting down. It was about 33 by 31. I don't know, the temps were in the 60s today, so that helped too a little bit. It's getting fall. You can see the leaves in the background on that tree are starting to change. So it's a little bit of a, a fall time stamp job. Now we're getting up to that back edge. That back edge is going to take us a little while so, because we'll have to use the flex mat up against that whole wall. We'll roll it first like I did right there with that roller. The good thing about that roller is it gets some texture. You can get some good texture in right up against the edge. And then you can see that black flex mat up against the edge. That what you don't have to worry about with that is once you roll it, you've already got texture there, so you don't have to spend too much time 
with the flex mat. But what you do have to do is every time you flex mat it, you got to go back and touch up with the touch up tool, which is what Luke is doing, to make sure your joints go all the way to the wall. Now we get the tamper broke out <laughs> because that edge was in the sun earlier. Previously, it was pretty firm, so we're just tamping in the the impressions to make sure we got the same type of texture up against that edge as we do back in the middle of this thing. But all in all, the stamp process went really, really nice on this. We we got to keep up with it perfect. And then uh, Luke's going to finish up that one little area there. And then I'm going to show you the next day we come back to SAR and we clean this. And then the following day after that we come back to stamp it. So here we are about noon the next day. They, they really didn't want too many saw joints in this thing. So we just put one down the middle each way. And because it was so thin we only sawed down about a half an inch. We didn't want to, we want to make sure we didn't saw into those uh, radiant heat tubes. So this will help control any shrinkage cracks. We typically saw everything we do, especially stamp concrete. A saw joint looks a heck of a lot better than a crack does. And we try to get the saw joint into one of the grooves of the stamp if we can. It doesn't always line up that way, but they, they kind of go away. They hide pretty good after you get it done. As you can see right there, the, I mean, the, the saw joints aren't that noticeable and this is how we wash and you can see we just use a pressure washer use some dawn dish detergent and some water we'll scrub this thing with a brush and then we'll just rinse it all down there happen to be a couple drains this thing sloped five inches from one end to the other to these drains so we got the rinse the water off pretty good and here we are the next day you know once everything's all dried out 24 hours later we'll come back and we'll seal it with that d1 sealer we get at deco Crete supply We'll put on three coats of this today, three really light coats. And this is kind of a semi-penetrating sealer plus a topical sealer, so it really helps pop the colors, as you can see right there. We just missed on a coat like that. That'll be the first coat, just nice light mist. We try to get about 300 square feet to a gallon on each of the coats. And it literally takes maybe two minutes to put a coat on something like this. We'll just go back and forth. We'll let it dry to tack free, dry to touch in between coats, which probably takes about 20 minutes really in between on a day like today. And then we'll go right back over it. And that's the basic process. That's how it turns out. That's a solvent-based sealer. So we use the stainless steel pump-up sprayer. You can see the color, how that color turns out. And that's just after the first coat. After the third one, it really, it really pops. Because after the first one, a lot of that soaks in and dries up. And here we are on the second one. I'm going to give you a rooftop view here in a second to show you what this looked like. The, the better pressure you have in that thing, the better the stuff sprays out. So Darren, you make sure that thing's pumped right up hard and then you get a nice mist like that. So here's a rooftop view, a little bit of glare from the sun, so it was hard to get a really nice shot, but this is what it ended up looking like. Let me know what you think down in the comments. You guys like this kind of pattern with this color? Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.